couple of flowers. I didn't mean to do that, but I kind of liked it. So. Okay. Back to the mountains. A little contouring. Maybe they're a touch dark. we always get these little rock faces on there so I, I typically will shoot a couple of those little guys on there maybe a little bit brighter than that just little trails of things you hardly even see them in the end but they they're there they're all around us all the time we get our little here in the foreground um, I've got this sort of tree mass going on the top and I'm gonna uh, you can attack this many different ways but I usually like to go with the shadow some people start in the middle and then pop their, get their shadows and they come back to their lights um, oftentimes I have to come back and hit more shadow so I'll just take a stab at it here I like that big one up there on the hill. And his redder friend next to him. Maybe a little grayer than that. I'll gray that by just adding a little bit of green. work my way down the hill. I don't bother contouring anything too much at this point. I mean, I certainly could get into all of these little trees and things like that and I want to I'm sitting there going, Ooh, I can't wait to All right. so what, what's happening here is look you see how it's getting lighter so I'm letting it mix with the background color for some of those way in the background lines just take those darks out of it and they feel far away Another great reason to paint thick because the background color mixes in with it. Now, isn't that hilarious? I feel like Bob Ross when I do that trick. <laughs> okay. Now these ones on the hill here are See the, the hill way over there, which is much further away than this hill right here. Can you see the atmosphere? The difference. So I always try to stress that. A little bit darker with the color in here. 
And hit a little bit more blue on these guys back here, just so they'll feel a little further away. kind of work my way down the hillside, understanding that it's a plane, you know, going down this way, and these things are overlapping each other as they go back in space. But as the face of the hill comes down toward you, things will spread out, and you might not even get hardly any overlapping. Maybe just a little bit. You'll see the trees, they'll be this far apart down here. Whereas here they're really overlapping. So that, that's being aware of that this is moving around and, and facing us here and then moving around and facing that way. It's just all these things. And just kind of lump them in like that. I love that. See the hills, the little landslide at the bottom? You get the little silhouette of the tree? I see those, that's such a California thing. So, maybe I'll make a big deal out of that because I love those things, you know, and that's what you do, that's your style. Your style comes from the things you like to emphasize. All right, so I've got a very, very light area right here. Ooh, I love those landslides. And I always paint them too big, and then I put trees in front of them. So I'm using that as a backdrop to silhouette these trees. I mean, literally, it's the same thing I used to do when I did sets. It's no different. I'm gonna pull this all the way out. Cause it could happen. And oftentimes, I'm not seeing it here so much, but as the, the, the grass grows over the tops of it, you'll get kind of a little shadow right under the lip, depending on where the light is. But I, I usually just put it in anyway. I just put a little shadow under there, maybe a little darker. You might not even see it there, but it won't look so flat. It'll give it a little bit of form. And who knows, maybe there's a tree casting a little bit of a shadow in there. It could happen. I just, I just do it because I want to direct the eye back into the piece. say take a little eucalyptus or whatever that is down there and just and really you're definitely creating a focal point here because this is where your most contrast is hardest edges most contrast most detail that's where the eye goes Typically, you know, you'll have uh, three to five focal points in the piece, but you want one main focal point, and the other ones are supporting 
I usually use them to sort of direct the eye around. Generally to the main focal point. So we'll see. I do that and I do that a bit and then I just go off in the wall. Cool. Alright. 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 That's all I wanted. Got this big eucalyptus next to it. It's kind of orange. I like that. I like the orange in that tree right next to it. And I'm going to stress that orange a little bit more. And see if I can get away with it. Um, and I'm just going to touch the surface. I'm just scooting it off the brush onto the surface. And if that doesn't cover well enough, a palette knife will usually really cover that. And I'm putting the red in there to break up all this green. I see some trees that are on the orange side, so I'll stress it a little bit more. <laughs> see a couple of little good guys in there too. I love the power knife. I something you know, I'll paint with a brush and then I start painting with a power knife and I'm like, why do I do this all the time? <laughs> Although the brush can really get it in there. It gets it up there really nice and quick, which is nice. I just go back and forth. That's a good reason to use a palette knife though is when you really want things to cover. Um. And of course our beautiful white sycamores are amazing. Oh, did you guys, uh, if anyone's interested, Go ahead. Um, so our, our white sycamores are blooming. It's kind of a yellowy. Yellowy color. Just kind of setting it up like that. I don't like how they prune them, so I'll just make it my way. Unpruned. And the yellow grass. I'm not all that interested in making a park, but we do have some serious yellow grass around here, like right there. I think I'm gonna pull some of that in there. Maybe a little bit. <coughs> not that light. Bouncing back between the lemon and the cad. In fact, I think I'm not going to put any uh, any man-made structures in this. And see if I can get away with it. Here's another T-shirt. I should just have a T-shirt. This is and. See if I can get away with it. <laughs> I mean, I know I say it every. I try to get away with everything I can. I think that's my theme of life. I try. It's like to be an artist, you have to be kind of sneaky. I mean, you've got to live low, you know, because you need the time. So it's just do everything you can just to I am I feel like I'm always buying time. Time is what you know, time is my thing. Just not enough time. Okay, 
Now I have that yellow on my brush. I want to hit a little more yellow on this, a uh, little more yellow on this mountain here, but I don't want it this yellow. So, compare. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I like that. Sometimes you get lucky. I'm going down with the plane. That's another t shirt for you, Rob. Sometimes, Sometimes I get you lucky. Get lucky. <laughs> Wait, wait, on the front it says sometimes you get lucky and on the back it says and sometimes you get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm not sure what that means, but... I noticed my daughter and her friends do that a lot. In their, their generation, they speak in really abstract terms. They just blurt out things that don't really make any sense. They're bizarre and ironic. Hey! Now, now look, I'm using this green here to do the same thing I'm using the white, the light here. I'm using the green to silhouette that. And I did make it a little bit bright, but it's kind of brightening up my day. I like that. You know? This is one of those days. So I'm going to throw myself a nice silhouette. I'm going to go with a... I think we have enough green up there. One of these uh, redder guys here. Let's see. I'm seeing a lot of red gray up there. This is pretty dark. See what I can come up with here. Oh. That's what I love about Helen. Look how it covers. So what I do is I just take it off. And then reload. Overlap. Magic. Okay, it's working, so I want to put it everywhere. Don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't. Oh man, it's like, it's like, stop! <laughs> it's working. So yeah, see, I got it. So we've got overlapping, 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 overlapping. You see? Creates depth. Also, the atmosphere creates depth. Uh, I think we all know what, what a little round thing with a little stick on it means. That's why you don't have to be very detailed when you paint palm trees. Uh, you know, just a little something in there. You put them anywhere you like. Look at those guys. So those will be fun. I'm just going to hit a little bit of light on here. The light's kind of coming from here. Casting little shadows down below. I notice I have more cast shadows now. One thing I like to do is just emphasize the blue in the shadow as it comes down the hill. It really makes them sit down. It sits them down, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's the idea. And I just throw them in like that, there'd be something in here. As I get closer to the foreground, I'll, I'll just when I throw some shadows in there, I'll get pretty pure. And I really love how these California Impressionists just, they, they just, they pull no punches. They just put pure blue in their shadows. Not all of them, but a lot of them did. Amazing. So throw some nice shadows down here on the ground. You know, 
that's even pretty gray compared to some of these impressionist uh, shadows. Look at this. More like that. Woo. You know? You gotta... Zap it. Shadowy things in there. I like to bring some shadows in from the sides once in a while, like, like this. And here, and there. Pro it's probably more accurate to put them in. Mm. Still have a couple more of these. And now, I'll put this in as a backdrop for what I like to call the payoff. And that is those beautiful white trunks. What I'll, I'll do is I'll throw the shadow. Well, you know what? I'm, there's two ways to do it. You can throw in the shadows first and then come back and hit some little highlights. Or you could put them in really bright and then tag some little cast shadows over it. I've been having pretty good luck lately with putting them in really bright and then hitting the cast shadows on them over. Um, I'm gonna do that instead. Pretty bright, not white, but I do like to have a little bit of, uh, a little warmth in there, a little bit of yellow in there. Here I got these little things in there. Yeah. See what that does? Yeah. They're phenomenal. They're everywhere. They <clears throat> make a big deal out of them. Look at them. They're everywhere. Here's another thing, just in case you might want to give this a try. The uh, palette knife. What happens is people hold on too tight so they always get these straight edge. Hold it real loose and you'll get a really organic edge. I just put them in really flat like that. Then I'll put a little foliage over them with some shadows. It's it's the bomb. Put a couple more back here. You can put them almost anywhere. So then I cheat a little bit and I, uh, I don't know if this is cheating, but I just pick up what's already there. Another advantage of the painting really thick, the paint's already on there. And I, I, I just overlap. Overlap. Kind of tuck it in, you know? Tuck it in. And I'll come back with a shadow, a shadowy color. Now the shadow on a very light tree like that's going to be very light. You can just see. Shadow. You don't need much. That's an end. And then this is, you know, you can pick and play with that as much as you like. Um, I'll hit a little light on these and uh, color finished. I should probably hit a little light on this too, huh? Here's what I'll do. Is I'll, I'll, I'll take that color I use on these purple ones, add a little white. 
I think alone that color would be a little desaturated. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that. Warm it up a little bit. And put that on the left side. Still showing a lot of shadows. Certainly could come back in there with some branches if you like. Now with these colors up here, I've got a lot of greens. I got a lot of this kind of thing happening. And what I'm going to do is, again, add white. Add white to get the value. The value is pretty good but that's a little desaturated so I'm going to resaturate with a little bit of yellow cad yellow and uh, look it it doesn't change it doesn't change the value it just changes the temperature makes it warmer you could also add a little bit of orange here and there we've got a little orange on those two so but I'm, I'm thinking every little ball here has a side to it. And the, the sides that are facing the top and to the left are going to catch the light. So you could just box them in if you like, like this. Top, side. Top, side. And back here is the same thing, but you just want to add a little more atmosphere. And I'll come in and vary that color. The principles all, all apply to waterfall. Same, same principles. A little lighter. So it kind of looks like a, a funky mess and then you get back here. I mean, I bet you this arroyo did look like that. <laughs> I mean, all I did was take out the human stuff. <laughs> and added a couple of ditties. Now, of course, now I would probably come back and fuss with the edges play with. I definitely want to add some more of those oranges in there and things like that, but so alright? Here's a California and the girls in there. And it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Yes. You want to sign later? to do a watercolor demo next, right? Watercolor. Watercolor. I feel like a... I feel like a roach coach chef. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. Some watercolor? How do you want it? Over easy? No problem. Can I stick this in your pocket? Because I owe you oh. for last time and I'm afraid okay. I'm going to forget this time too. So that's for two. Okay. You Thank mean, because you. you weren't there the other day. The time before oh. that, I, I didn't pay, I left. I forgot to pay you. Oh. And you kindly didn't set a, send a collector out after me. <laughs> You know, I forget, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think you, you guys are me always, money. Are always uh, very cool about it. Thank you. George? Oh, 
Go to brush. Okay. Go to brush. I don't know. This brush. Look at this. I beat it up. I've already beat. I painted easily ten paintings with this painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really beat my brushes up. And look at that. Look at that. Look at that point. I can't say enough about these brushes. Right? But I better shut this. <laughs> Because I know I'll plop it right in there. Because <laughs> I go on autopilot, you know. And I just... Look at that. Well, I've never done that before. <laughs> that works. That works. So now you know that's the cheapest palette you'll ever get. <laughs> like what, five dollars a piece or something, right? Yeah. Man. Now if I could get my water up over here with the clamp, I would be just. But I won't waste your time. I could probably figure it out though. What am I doing? The same thing? You want me to do the museum? Oh, yeah. Do you want? The museum? Museum? Okay. So, yeah, you were asking me earlier. Now, that, that's more of a twist, right? No, um... But I, I think I probably could put this over here. Yeah, that's a better angle. And then... I hope this isn't in the way. Okay, so. Morning, Henry. Morning, Put kind of an organic edge in there. Just giving me the slope. And the fact that my. And where do I want to put it? Try not to put a dead center, which would be the obvious place. But if I get to... Uh, put it here. And I really wanted to break that contour of the background. Uh, the contour of the background, the trees. I wanted to come out over the top of it a little bit. Now, here's where your perspective will come in. See, it's just a big box. That's all it is. So is that the building with the flag on top? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the flags. <laughs> all right. You notice we're looking up at it. So the box, see? The box, the highest point is here in the center. This part. If you make one of these the highest point, it'll look, it'll look screwy. Because you're basically, you got one box here. That's what you're seeing the corner of. And then here you're seeing the face of this side. Over here. And then, you got a roof on it. And then another little box on top of it here. Because sometimes these angles can get a little weird. You're looking at it and you're going, wait. <laughs> Maybe mine's a little, mine could be a little bit flatter than that, but whatever. We have a couple, I see a thing here. Just putting little markers. Just kind of marking where I am. Like here's the edge over there. I've got trees. No 
trees over there. I'm going to go, go ahead and throw in some sky first. <laughs> Man, it doesn't take very much. vibrant than that so I'm gonna maybe I'm even I'm seeing a little bit of green in there a little Prussian now here's a little little secret take that blue down below below your uh, foliage. Not right up to it, below it. And then paint the foliage over it and you'll get nice. If you don't, you'll get all these little white gaps in between. And sometimes that looks good, but sometimes it looks um, not good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, you want the white gaps. See, I leave them. But... Uh, sometimes they can look a little... strange. All right. I'm going to throw ahead... go ahead and throw down some yellow. Knowing that this is a watercolor, right? So I'm going to overlap it with other things. But I'm seeing some orange on that hillside. Just wanted to cover my big masses first. Here. A little Prussian blue, a lemon yellow, and whatever else is on the. I mean, they're. I got junk on here, so I don't know exactly what else is mixing in there. I just look at it and see if I like it. Yeah, after a while, you don't think of names of colors. You just think of the color. might be a little orange so I can dull that with something a little bit blue and in the background see I brought my background all the way up to here Just pinning around these. Basically, I'm shaping this building with the background. I just keep all that kind of rough. A rougher edge is better, like this. Kind of a scumbly edge, because I can do a lot with that. Uh, those edges, I can come back and play with those. So. And those would be my very lightest light. Now I'll come in 
on the building with some shadow and allow these to dry while I'm finishing the shadows here and then I'll come back in with all these. It's a strategy. While one part's drying, the other part you're working on. So you're constantly working on new areas. And it's kind of a gray. So now, like, for, sometimes if you don't know what to do, just make up the gray that you see. Okay. I'm seeing something like that. You know, it's not exciting. So then I try to make it more exciting with other colors. Because reality is kind of great. And then it casts a shadow over all this stuff in the background here. Heck, I'd like to see more blue in there. I want to just uh, soften this edge a little bit here. This is, so it's not razor sharp, that's all. I'm noticing the shadow right next to the building. Wow. This little one, this, there's a little plane in here. It gets very orange. Because it's, it's taking some... Um, it's taking some reflective light off the building. So you notice how the, see the one out here is really great, but the shadows in here are really kind of orange. That's a dog walker. Under the roof line, you'll always find a little bit of shadow. 